ready to get to the checkup. Let's talk Tarantino. Tarantino, big news. Massive news. Uh, we've been waiting on updates for the movie critic. It is in pre-pre-production. What that means, I'm not quite sure. It just means that we're leaking stuff to the press. Tarantino doing a couple interviews, and let's get to it. Tarantino is reportedly, not reportedly, he said he's looking for an actor in his 30s to star in his final project, his final directed film. It's going to be about a movie critic who wrote for a pornographic magazine. Sounds very Tarantino. Tarantino said, quote, I haven't decided yet. It's going to be somebody in the 35-year-old ballpark. It'll definitely be a new leading man for me, end quote. So take out, cross off Leonardo DiCaprio, cross off Brad Pitt. We're going to discuss who we think could potentially right take up their mantle here. It takes place in California, 1977. And Tarantino said, quote, it's based on a guy who really lived but was never really famous. And he used to write movie reviews for a, porn, a porno rag. Uh, he wrote about mainstream movies. He was a second string critic. I think he was a very good critic. He was as cynical as hell. His reviews were a cross between Howard Stern and what Travis Bickle might be if he were a film critic. End quote. Wild description of a real-life person, Ricky Flex. I guess initial reactions on hearing about this character that will be the star of Tarantino's final film. It's exciting. It's exciting. I When he said new actor, mid-30s, 35-year-old ballpark, I think was the quote. That was just like, wow. I love how, like he, cause he also had a quote saying like how he wants to go out on top, you know? And uh, like he was saying how he wants to go out on top and he's not going to direct a movie again. He might do other stuff, TV shows and continue to write, but no longer directing movies. He wants to go out on top. So that tells me mid thirties, he's going to pick up one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, I have options. If he doesn't, I have a bunch of options if he does, but either way, I trust Tarantino. So when I initially read that, that was my initial, uh, initial thought. But then after that, the second layer was, okay, um, the guy who really lived. So, okay, like maybe he, he enjoyed his job, lived it up in California. Okay, we could see some really flashy scenes. Never really famous. Okay, grounded story like that. But then he write, wrote reviews for a porno rag. That tells me wacky. Wacky, and that's why the Howard Stern that's the first time I heard the Howard Stern reference. That makes sense. The taxi driver definitely makes sense. So, everything's coming together. That was like kind of like a hiccup for me where I was like, huh, but I was like, all right, that could work. We could spin this, and he could re really develop this character because it's so grounded. So, I'm all in on this, of course, no matter what the synopsis or whatever he was going to say here, but it's getting my juices flowing of who could be a uh, potential top villain here. Yeah, we'll get to the potential roster in a second, but why I we kind of had a just we've had multiple discussions on the movie critic as these details have started to um, bubble up. This is like I think a great idea for a final film for a guy like Quentin Tarantino because it's like we talk about the idea that he's never going to make something that is so autobiographical, right? Similar to like Steven Spielberg did with the Fablemans or James Gray with like an Armageddon time here. It's like he, I think he's projecting his love of film through this weird eccentric story that goes with the filmography of a Quentin Tarantino, right? It's like this guy who just loves movies. And he, the only way he gets his thoughts out and published is through a pornographic magazine. He may not even like, like be interested in the porn or the company that's associated itself, but he has an opportunity, right? To display, his feelings about film. He's a true cinephile. That's why I think it's so perfect for Tarantino to project in this manner. Um, I was kind of interested by the Howard Stern and Travis Bickle hybrid. So Howard Stern, I'm thinking this guy is like uncensored. He's not afraid to say what he feels and he doesn't care what people think about him. And then Travis Bickle, I'm thinking this guy is kind of a loner. Maybe he starts to get more notoriety, but people don't truly know and can't put a face to who he is. This is 1977. It's not 2023 where this guy's projecting his movie takes on Twitter, and he's not letting us know what he's more anticipated for, Barbie or Oppenheimer. He's coming off a very important stage in Hollywood. You're coming a year after Taxi Driver. Right, we're we're on the blossoming of Rocky Network, some of the greatest films, all the President's Men from. Film history. I think it's like a great time period that he selected. I can't wait to like see like 
his thoughts process. I, there's been um, reports that they're going to recreate scenes of iconic films in this movie. I'm all in on that. They're like, give me Tarantino just like recreating his favorite scenes as a cinephile himself. That's sick. Um, all, I'm all in on this. I want to get to some of the potential names here, but do you have any other thoughts on the story here, Flickstar? The, the redoing scenes, like you said, it was mentioned before this news came out. So that's like, okay, movie critic, that makes sense. Like reviewing movies in the 70s, recreating scenes, love that. But as a porno reviewer, I don't get it anymore. So I'm interested to see, oh, is he recreating the scenes because – of the movie critic, the critic wise where the guy maybe wants to review movies and not pornos, or is it just like he's re recreating scenes like in the movie that's similar to like a taxi driver or like a network where it's like, Oh, it's not a direct correlation one-to-one, -one, but it's like paying homage to those, you know, maybe there's a car chase scene and it's like, Oh, that's homage to the French connection. Ooh, that's good. Uh, yeah. That's, that's kind of what now I'm thinking versus prior where I'm like, Oh, he's literally going to go one for one, recreate the exact same scene because he's a movie critic. I was thinking that potentially he gains notoriety, so he's allowed on sets. And so oh, like, they can be show. on set while they're recreating these scenes. It won't be in the same exact lens or perspective as the actual film, but rather you're going to see it like as like the love of movies of Tarantino as the film is going and watching these actors do their thing. I think that would be pretty cool. And that seems like it'd be up his alley. But who knows? We'll wait for the details to come out. Let's go over potential names that could star in Tarantino's final film. If we know something about Tarantino, he loves movie stars. He loves to cast past, present, big name actors. This one, mid thirties, and he says he hasn't worked with this actor before. So I mentioned a couple of names we crossed off, Leo, Brad Pitt. And Sam, male, just be clear. Male, and it's not gonna be about Pauline Kael, like many people presumed, right? It's gonna be a male yeah, character. Exactly why I wanted to clear that up. Similar to most Tarantino movies, he's had a couple female leads, but uh, I would say, for the most part, male. So, Ricky Flex, um, I have a list of names. Same. Okay. So, here's what we could do. Maybe we give, first off, the person we feel strongly strongest about. Okay. Do you, do you have yours broken out in tiers at all? Well, I, here's what I have. I have one guy listed... This is Operation Get Blank Blank Person and Oscar. I have this one where this guy would be great if it was a David Fincher movie. I have another guy in this guy could actually work, but it would be kind of unconventional. And then I have another guy under wild card. <laughs> okay. I have tiers that are a little different where it's like, okay, tier one is, okay, you want to get like the hottest mid-30s male actors in Hollywood. Hottest as in like best working uh, mid-30s actors in Hollywood. I have another one where it's like, oh, up and coming people in their 30s. Mm -hmm. And then I have comebacks because Tarantino is known for bringing people back. People Ooh. that need a comeback. Oh, I got or that. That's just, my wild card. Or my like, wild card uh, is a comeback yeah. guy. Yeah, but I think comeback we just go, slash on the way up or comeback. Yeah, whatever. Just go with who you think is best fit. Who's the best fit for this role, Ricky? I don't want to take it. You, you say it first. Paul I think Dano, dude. It's this Paul is, Dano. This is Operation Get Paul Dano an Oscar. This he is so perfect for this, Ricky. It's like you can't have someone that's beautiful looking, right? You need someone that can play the dramatic side, hasn't worked with Tarantino, could also can get a little wacky at points, right? We've seen with plenty of his roles in his filmography. Uh, Dano is as big of a name right now as he's ever been, being the villain in the Batman. He's going to continue to be in the Batman universe, most likely following the end of that film. Um, he was in the Fablemans with Spielberg. He has association with big name directors in an age of movie star. Like he's kind of a new wave movie star where he's not in the public eye, but he has some mystery and aura around him. And he's just an average Joe. So this guy who is not uber famous, he's gaining notoriety. How does he handle it? I think when you see Travis Bickle, I can see like Paul Dano playing a loner of sorts compared to some of these other actors here. And I think he could really pull it off. I think this role really was meant for Paul Dano. Yeah. Like our plump boy, this would be the one, one, like if we're drafting like Tarantino, uh, this role for Tarantino, Paul Dano is an unanimous one, one. Yeah, we could have a draft for that, <laughs> to be honest. But I think Paul Dano is the guy because of 
well, you just need a big name. He like Tarantino's not going to cast a no name. You yeah, know? and like, go ahead. he's not going to cast a no name. And like, yes, Paul Dano's not the biggest star. Like, he's not because he's not the greatest looking. Even though he's underratedly good looking now, because he's lost some weight, he's got some good flow. He's coming. He's on the comeback. You know, he's, hot. So he's on the come up. People he's are playing. asking, is Paul Dano hot? <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's there yet. Like Jesse Plemons, he's back. He's back to Friday Night Lights, like thin, and like he lost a ton of weight, and he's married to Kristen Dun- Kristen Dunst. Is he in the running here? He, he's also on my list. Are we having a rival of our Plump Boys for the lead in Tarantino's yes. final movie? Like, j- j- the pl- Plump Boys are in right now. They are so in. Fraser, Oscar, Plemons, like, Love and Death. Now not, Dano, Operation, I, get him an Oscar. Uh, Scorsese. Um, uh, we are not interested in selling any of our plump boy stock. But no. if we did, we would make a lot of money right now. We would. Well, Frazier, yeah. Lemons, Dana. Like, we would make a lot of money. Yeah. We, we, we can't give it up yet. We, these movies haven't even come out. Buy and hold. Diamond Tar- hands. Tarantino's final film. If we got Dano, our plump boy, that would just make the big three. And then like Paul Walter Hauser, you, like that's our new plump boy, number four. You can't th- he's not a leading man yet, but he would also be intriguing here. Um, why don't you give me another name? Since I gave Paul Dano, we went over Plemons. I assume we both had him, but who else do you have potentially in this film? Okay, I'll go with like tier one where it's like, okay, everyone knows this guy. Um I also was thinking like, all right, Tarantino's last movie, and who's some of like the best working actors who's really who are really committed to like working with every great director, you know, and who hasn't worked with Tarantino yet, and and uh, who's committed to trying to work with the Scorseses, the Finchers, every, everyone, uh, Spike Lee, you know, Adam Driver. Yeah, Adam too. Adam Driver was the first first person I thought of because yes, he could play a good looking dude. Last duel, uh, I guess yeah. But he could he could get he could white noise. He was fat, didn't have balding like hairline way back, and like House of Gucci. He looked sharp. Ferrari. He looked sharp. But he's just very versatile when it comes to looks and also acting. And I think he would nail this role because he's just a great actor. Are you the best working actor today or one of? So. That was like mid thirties. He's uh, thirty nine. I think it still works. Adam Driver, first person I thought of after the Plump Boys, because he's probably the biggest named thirty something year old actor right now. Honestly. There's another I had. Yeah, I, I have a couple here, and like Garfield is like also up there with like some of the yep. biggest right now. But like it's Driver right to me is uh, more. Uh, he's right there with Garfield, actually. Like uh, both of them are pretty high up yes. there. But yes. like Garfield's too good looking to play a, a movie critic for an, in a porno mag. You know, like I think it could work though because he can play nerdy. He can. Yeah, I he's just Ronnie. You could you could scrape up the hair or you make it more seventies. I think you can make it work. I think Driver's a better fit, but I think you can make it work with Garfield. Um, you think again, of the big... someone that likes to work with other great directors. You think of the big names that Tarantino's work with, right? Like Brad Pitt, Leo. Like Adam Driver seems like he's like the next guy. Yes. You know? Yes. Like it just seems you know? like Tarantino like recognizes game. Like game recognizes game, you know? Like Adam Driver. I Michelle Rodriguez, Fast X. <laughs> oh, God. I laughed, at, I laughed during that moment in Fast X. Um, <laughs> here's what I had too. If this was a David Fincher movie, I want Evan Peters in this role. Oh, my God. I had Evan Peters. Ricky, if this is a David Fincher movie and we're trying to go lean a little bit more on that Travis Bickle like type character, get the guy who played Dahmer, one of the most exciting mid thirties actors. I would like him. He doesn't fit for a Tarantino movie, but if you just looked at that description where it's a cross between Howard Stern and Travis Bickle, I'm taking Evan Peters. I think he's he's literally with Paul Dano, the next like perfect combo. Right. He's just um he doesn't have the film notoriety. And like people have brought up like Jeremy Allen White potentially like yeah. being in this film. He has doesn't have the film notoriety Not yet. Big enough yet. Like you need someone with a big time movie presence for a Tarantino movie. So those guys are intriguing. They just would never be in it. Um, what's the other name you had? An uh, interesting one. I think uh we also just have to mention this guy. He's the we gotta mention Robert Pattinson. And you can't say he's too good looking because again, like you think the what lighthouse, you know, like he could get grimy. He can, he can get grimy. The Rover, 
good good time. He was kind of good looking. He's also man. that big name esque, you know. And he's a Batman. big name who can get like not unrecognizable, but pretty damn close. And as long as he's scrawny, like post Batman Pattinson, like this could work. And he, he's similar to Driver. He could do anything. And yeah. again, w- one of our guys, spe- like, I love him. I ha- I got a poster just because I got a Batman poster to put up here in my background. Pattinson, Pattinson, he could do any role on the planet. I like if he was casting this, I wouldn't be upset. Obviously, a Dano or a Dahmer is that fits like a glove. This you need to oil up the glove, put it under, put a baseball in the mitt, get the rubber bands out, put it underneath the mattress to make sure it fits well. But it when it once it's out underneath the mattress for that first catch with dad, it's gonna be feeling great. <laughs> All right, Colin Coward, chill out. Um, <laughs> I would I, let's make a more simple metaphor. He can get gritty, right? He can lift, he can lift the car hood, he can wipe the grease through the hair, and then he can get grimy, dude. Um, that's where like Pat has proved that through his filmography. Someone that is so in demand right now, he's working with the best of the best, Bong Jude Ho, Mickey 17, uh, coming out next year. He's doing the Adam McKay movie alongside, um, Robert Downey Jr. for Netflix, right, in the coming years. And then he's Batman. Like, he is arguably the biggest star in this in his 30s alongside the likes of Garfield and Driver. Like, he's a part of that, like, that big three um, that attracts, like, the big name notoriety that Tarantino likes. I'll give you someone else that could actually work. And I want to think of, like, a comeback type of thing here, Ricky Flick, something that Tarantino is known for. I want someone that yes. was nominated for an Oscar back in 2011. Yes, I have the same one. I want Jesse Eisenberg potentially yes, Eisenberg. playing this role. I think Jesse Eisenberg, he, he, I think he has a great sense of humor that can fit into a Tarantino movie. He can be that outsider, weirdo, weirdo isolated dude. Uh, he can he can play off guys in an awkward manner. You know, I just think uh, he would be an interesting pick here because I would love to see him reach that level again. Uh, Cause he's kind of been away. He's been behind the camera a little bit. He's been doing a lot of indie projects. Let's get him back out there with Tarantino's final film. The guy's talented when he actually puts his chops on screen. Uh, I think that's someone I was just considering as well. And like, he's been with Sorkin, the social network script. He could handle any dialogue you throw at him and Tarantino, you know how that, he loves that's his the dialogue. Question. And Can't he do Eisen- that every day, like jibber jabber? You know, Eisenberg. Yes, he yeah. played Mark Zuckerberg in the Social Network. And well, he's, that's not the best example. <laughs> I think it is. Why like not? Like common man type of like. Oh, human, common man. You know? That is the tough one, but I think he could do it. Um, all right, come back. I, I like that. I had that one, but I had another one too. This I'm one, on. oh my god! If you have the same one as this one, then we're really on like on the same page here. This one's more, it's not Howard Stern. We're leaning much more Travis Bickle on this side. And it's 36-year-old Shia LaBeouf. I had it as well. <laughs> Dude, this would be a comeback of comebacks. If anyone's going to get this guy back in gear, it's going to be Tarantino. And this Imagine won't. those two on set. <laughs> Wild. Chaos. Agents yeah. of chaos. But I think Shia LaBeouf like, respects, like, he would respect Tarantino. Like he does have respect for people. It's just that I have respect for direct, like people he works with. Cause he's so uh, like uh, committed, passionate about his roles, obviously too passionate. Some would say, but it's just off the field issues and <laughs> yeah. it's getting better. Now he has a kid. Um, he's going through the court, the legal issues. He has another weird movie coming out. If it isn't out already, that's going to be behind him. His sole focus would be this. His life. This would be his life on the line. You would get the best of the best from Shia LaBeouf. That is a scary, that's scary on set, but also how good he would be. So Shia LaBeouf and Jesse Eisenberg were my two comebacks. Yeah. I view it like a like a, a, a prize fighter who hit rock bottom who wants to like rise again. You know, he's hungry. He wants it. You know, it's like Rocky Five. Yes. You know, he wants it again. Uh, like or George Ro- Foreman. Yeah, Rocky Three. Rocky, Rocky three downfall from grace. And then he's back. Um, that's pretty good. I think that's all I really had. I, I, I had some weird ones that I don't think uh, could really match up here. I thought Quick another hits. big name, like Hollywood blockbuster dude, like miles Teller, big name. Talk about completing a comeback. I don't know if he has the chops necessarily yeah, no. following top gun Maverick, but um, movie I star, think, I think but... we got a good list here. I think we got a good list here. And if you want to go, if you went full, like 
Travis Bickle, I, and then oh, maybe like he, this, this guy's a funny guy. It's Michael Sarah, but he won't be in a Tarantino movie. He won't be. Yeah, like, no, 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 he's out. He's out. It's just, I thought that's not, that's the last name I really had on here. But right now I'm thinking it's Dano. And then after that, probably the person I want to see next is Eisenberg Diaz. Yeah. I, I, again, driver, don't count him out. Uh, quick hits. I'll just name a couple I had. Uh, Eddie Redmayne. Ew. That would like porno, like Howard Stern, like nerdy. Like, I think that would work. I, 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 Tarantino probably like scoffs at Eddie Redmayne. Like, like yeah, yeah. Eddie I'm Redmayne seems like he's like hoity toity. And then Tarantino's common man. And I'll drop like F bombs okay, in your face. Well, going back to the common man here, Sebastian Stan. That'd be good. That'd be right. good. But is he high profile enough? Even with no. like the Avenger movies, you know? No, he's not. But no. I'm, these are like after our list, like, we already have our list. We have a great list. Now I'm just saying guys that I Fun. think would work. Like Sebastian Stan, I think would work. Yeah. No, that's not so, bad. What else you got? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. Like the other ones I like, yeah, I don't even want to say, but. Fun exercise. Like, this is like why we do the checkup. Yeah. 